Hey guys, welcome to the Train Right podcast presented by CTS, a podcast about furthering human performance in endurance sports. I'm your host, Hillary Allen, and today we have a really special guest. To kick off the Train Right podcast trail running edition, we have Dean Carnassus. So Time Magazine has named him one of the most top 100 most influential people in the world. Men's fitness held him as one of the fittest men on the planet. Stan Lee of Marvel Comics fame called him a real superhuman. An acclaimed endurance athlete and New York Times bestselling author, Dean Carnassus has pushed his body and mind to inconceivable limits. Among his many accomplishments, he has run 50 marathons in all 50 US states in 50 consecutive days. He's run 350 continuous miles for going sleep for three nights. And he's run across the Sierra Desert in 120 degree temperatures. And he's run a marathon to the South Pole in negative 40 degrees. On 10 different occasions, he's run a 200 mile relay race solo, racing alongside teams of 12. His long list of competitive achievements include winning the world's toughest foot race, the Badwater Ultra Marathon, running 135 miles nonstop across the Death Valley during the middle of summer. He has raced and competed on all seven continents of the planet, twice over. Dean is an ESPN ESPY winner a three-time recipient of the Competitor Magazine's Endurance Athlete of the Year Award and serves as a U.S. athlete ambassador. He's twice carried the Olympic torch and in 2018 received the the President's Council on Sports, Fitness, and Nutritional Lifetime Achievement Award. We're really lucky to have Dean as a guest on on the CTS Train Ride podcast. So let's dive into it. Welcome to the Train Right Podcast. I'm your host, Hillary Allen, and we have a special guest today, my good friend, Dean Carnassus. Hey, Dean. Hey, Hillary. (laughs) I thought for a second you'd say, this is my uh, train wreck uh, new podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I don't know. This line is kind of jumbled. You're in France, right? Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, but um, you welcome. This is actually, you're going to be the first guest on this podcast. So I'm really happy to oh. kick things off with you. Um, you were literal. When you said that, you actually literally meant it. Yeah, I, right. yeah exactly. Yeah. So kick things off with the bang. So, um, I mean, I already introduced you. You have an extreme, you're an extremely accomplished athlete. Um, but I want to ask you some more, you know, personal questions about running. First of all, you have an interesting connection with CTS. Um, do you want to explain that a little bit to me? Yeah, so, you know, I, got in, I used to run when I was in, uh, in high school. That was like uh, my last uh, actual competitive running. It was a, a freshman in high school on the cross country team. Yeah, okay. so after that, I kind of just stumbled, literally stumbled into ultra running and you know found the sport fascinating you know i ran a race called the western states 100 mile endurance run which you know well yeah uh in 1994 and that was kind of my first exposure to you know the craziness the madness of ultra marathoning (laughs) and i just i kind of figured it out on my own you know i talked to people i experimented Mm -hmm. and you know just uh, did what i did but i wasn't you know nowadays a lot of people come up through the collegiate ranks and they're well coached and you know i wasn't that at all i was yeah. just self-coached and then in yeah. uh, 2005 i decided i would try to run 50 marathons in 50 states in 50 days and i thought you might need a coach for this one oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah like so, where do you get a coach yeah but like before before we get into that how in the world like I mean, I stumbled into ultra running just by accident, I felt. But, like, I stumbled into, like, 50Ks. Like, not, like, a 100-mile <laughs> race like Western States, which is notoriously hard. And then, like, your 50 marathons in 50 states in 50 days. Like, how in the world did you just fall in love with something so quickly? Well, you know, I've, I've been doing this for 25 years. So, <laughs> uh, but, you know, like many... Um, when you experience ultra marathoning, 
uh, you either say, I'm never going to do this again, or you get, you get into it. I mean, I say there's, a, there's magic and misery, and there's just some magic about getting out there and doing something really difficult and really uncertain for long periods of time. You know, many people would look at this and go, don't you get bored when you run? Yeah. And they just don't get it, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I was drawn to ultra marathoning, and I just, you know, like you, I never stopped exploring. So I kept seeking out, you know, I did the Western States 100, and I thought, what's, you know, what's tougher than that? I heard about this race called the Badwater Ultra Marathon, yep. you know, so I went and did that. And then I just kept saying, you know, where, where can you take this? And uh, ended up, you know, at 50 marathons in 50 states in 50 days looking for a coach. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And so that's what you, how you stumbled across CTS. Cause I mean, self-coaching, I think works really well, but I mean, and I think it's, it's everyone's cup of tea, but like sometimes you, if you have like a really hard goal like this, it mm -hmm. could help to have a coach. <laughs> well, you know, I, I thought about who would be the best coach for something like this. Cause what sort of running event is kind of back to back, you know, like, uh, like mm -hmm. this sort of endeavor. And I thought, yeah. Not many, but a good model was the Tour de France. Yeah. Uh, so this is, I looked at Tour de France, it's 21 days, so it's a bit shorter, but I thought, you know, this is, these are people performing at their best for 21 days and there's travel involved. Yeah. And I knew that Chris was like the guy for most of the American cyclists. So that's how we formed a relationship. You know, he said, well, this is running. I, you know, I, I knew, I know this great running coach and I'm thinking about bringing him on board. His name is Jason Coop. And I thought, okay, who is this kid, Coop? <laughs> you know, oh, I'm like, what God. is he going to teach me? And I learned so much from Jason that I thought this, you know, why didn't I have a coach earlier? I probably would have uh, done a lot better in my performances. <laughs> so, I mean, was it always about, I mean, the 50 marathons in 50 states in 50 days, I mean, was that more about like you just wanted to complete it? I mean, it was a record in itself. Um, for, were you looking at individual performance goals along the way or just kind of this longer this long-term goal of completing it. Yeah, so um, the genesis of how this happened is I work with this great um, outdoor company called The North Face. I think you <laughs> might know them, Hillary. Uh, yeah, maybe, I might know them. <laughs> <laughs> and you, as you know, they have a yearly um, expedition proposal process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I was always, I was the first performance athlete with The North Face um, yeah. back in 1999. And, you know, I'd look at these proposals for these expeditions, all of them were like, I'm going to climb, you know, the north face of Noopsy, or, you know, yeah. I'm going to do something crazy on K2. And, you know, I'm going to climb Everest for the 10th time. Mm. And I thought, you know, does does expedition always have to be on a mountain, like maybe the north face can kind of stretch their thinking and, and go off the mountain. So I submitted this proposal for 50 marathons in 50 states in 50 days as a north face expedition. And the marketing, uh, you know, the VP of marketing at that time was so into it. So that's how the whole thing got launched. And to, you know, just to explain how it happened, a lot of the, the runs were recreated marathons. Like you don't show up in Iowa on Tuesday and find an organized marathon, right? No, really? <laughs> no, yeah. So the, the agency was coordinating all this, um, contacted the race directors for the most prominent marathons in those states, in 42 states, and said, you know, when we're in Iowa on Tuesday, uh, hmm. Will you set up your official starting line, let us follow your sanctioned and certified course, and then finish at your official finish line? So we had a record of actually doing the marathon. Nice. And I say we, the one thing the North Face wanted to do is open it up to other runners. Yeah. So it was amazing. We had permits for up to 50 marathoners to join me at these recreated marathons. They were all sold out. with wait, like Some had waiting lists of like 150 people to get in. It was so much fun. Whoa. running a marathon, you know, in Dallas, Texas on some random Thursday with 50 other people. And yeah. um, unlike, you know, like the regular Dallas marathon where they hold the whole course closed, you know, 26 miles for mm -hmm. seven hours or whatever the cutoff is, um, we had to stay together as a pod because we had these roaming police escorts that would close intersections as we were going through, you know, so yeah. they just close the course for us as we were roaming along. And so inevitably, the pace was a little bit slower because we, we couldn't really drop people because the police were like, you, you got to all stick together. That's part of the deal with pulling this off. Cause we were going up on the freeways, like some of the marathon courses yeah. go on freeways. So they're like, you cannot spread out too far. 
So I think the average marathon time was like um, 340 or something, uh -huh. which is still pretty respectable. But yeah. I think if I had done it on my own, I probably would have gone a little bit faster than some of them. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, this is like the genesis of, of ultra running and thinking of ultra running as kind of this creative expression of exploration. I mean, there's this also this movement in, in ultra running at fastest known times, right? And it can be, it can be done not only like on a road, like something that you're doing, um, covering these extreme dif distances. Um, it can be on, on mountains, right? It can be a uh, crazy traverse. Like you know, some of our teammates, Mike Foot and Mike Wolf, they did the crown traverse from, you know, across the Rocky Mountains. I can think of these extreme, you know, routes to do. And I think it all comes from this idea. I mean, I, I think you, know, you, you were one of the first people to come up with this and, and show to North Face themselves and not end the world that running can actually be this explorative, like extreme thing. Um, yeah, there's oh, just- Oh, Hillary, you and I mean, the early days of North Face, I'm like, guys, people want to go light and fast. Like they don't <laughs> want to wear big Vibram sole boots and have these packs on with frames. Like we want to kind of move freely and run and shuffle. Yeah. They didn't get it. I'm like, trail running is the future. They're like, trail running, what's that? Exactly. And they just, I, I mean, it was like, I was like twisting the arms, please get into this category. Like performance is going to be great. And everyone's yeah. going to go to the trails and the North Face belongs here. And yeah. they just, they didn't see the vision. They're like, no, no, it's going to be a niche, small sport. Oh and, my gosh. You know, you've seen what's happened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know. I know because we there is we just had you know there's the North Face 50 in in Marin and there's how many people that come out to that? You know, in total, there's about five thousand runners, and it's two days of running. And what a lot of the elites don't realize, I mean, they're there on Saturday for the championship 50 mile race. Yeah. Um, if you come on Sunday, the next day where there's a half marathon, a 5k, and a 10k, mm -hmm. there's like twice as many people. Yeah. You know, still, yeah. I mean, you know, we had 800 runners at the. Um, 50 miler, which is the, I'm sorry, 600 runners at the 50 yeah. miler, that, which is the cutoff. We yeah. had 1300 runners at the half marathon. So, oh gosh. and a lot of them were first time trail runners. Like that was the first experience with the trail. So it's such a good feeder. Yeah. I think the endurance challenge, just the format, because it brings in new people to the sport as well as we recognize and celebrate the elites. Yeah. I mean, it's one of my favorite events. I wasn't out there this year, but I mean, when I was super injured, I came out and I did the 10K. I actually like walked it with, with my good friend, Rob Kahn. I remember that. Oh, I remember man. that. Yeah. Yeah. I it's remember. Just, it's, it creates, it's, it's so, it's so accessible. And like a big city, like, you know, San Francisco, you can get, you know, people who've never run trail before, you know, out on the trails. Yeah. But, well, mean, and the other thing, I mean, you, you know, you probably don't know this, but I've run over 300 road marathons. So just regular marathons. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, you know, like I've done the New York city marathon, I think 15 times, you know, Boston, uh, a dozen uh, times. Yeah. So, I mean, I've done a lot of just regular, I mean, I'm not fast. I'm running, you know, at my peak, you know, just sub three hours, you know, barely sub three hours. And now, you know, three fifteen to three thirty, sometimes slower. Um, but That's the, the road to trail, but you know, earlier I'd see no trail runners, no ultra marathoners at these events, never. And now, like I call it the road to trail conversion. So many people are getting off the road and converting into trail running. And yeah. I go to the New York city marathon. I mean, half the people I'm, I'm, I know there are like trail runners or ultra marathoners. Yeah. So yeah. how do you actually do that? Because I think a lot of people are scared to make the leap. Um, and so obviously I think you inspire a lot of people. You can lead by example. Um, and actually, I don't think you know about this, but, uh, my, f I actually ran two road marathons. Two. Uh, and then I was like, screw this. <laughs> I'm going to run on the trail. Um, but yeah, like, no, I you probably I, ran I, in your trail shoes knowing you. Yeah, I know. I, I actually did start road running. I did the self-supported, um, road marathon because I wanted to break three hours and then once I did that yeah. I was like all right see ya but how do you how do you make that transition I mean obviously running is running I, I love it in in both forms but trail running is my favorite um but I kind of like just got into that naturally how do you make the leap from road to trail you know I think that it starts just with finding a trail I mean mm -hmm. You know, we we are you know we've done so much so much trail running, and we've been exposed to trails around the world. But for a lot of people, like in the Midwest, a trail is is a graded fire road. 
Yep. So it's just a, a, you know, a non paved surface. Mm-hmm. and finding these places to go running. They're all over the country, but sometimes it's not so obvious, you know, where a trail might be. So yeah. finding a trail and then experiencing it. I always say, do your run on the trail either at sunrise or sunset, and even bring a headlamp. And so you're going into the night, and it's like such a religious experience for people first experiencing a trail that um, it only takes one exposure and you're hooked, <laughs> literally. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Especially it's, I think like running at sunrise is like a conversation with mother nature, like (laughs) just starting your day. It's, it's wonderful. And actually I think, I mean, growing up in Colorado, I think my version of a trail, I can be uh, quite spoiled. I mean, in California too, the trails are, are gorgeous, right? You can have some sort of elevation gain and some sort of, you know, mountain accessible to you. But what I realized from just traveling around and for even in cities, like I'm not a very much of a city person, but you can actually always find like a park or a place to run that, you, like you said, is a non-paved, a non-paved uh, road. And I mean, to me, that's magical. You could just kind of create a little bit of space. And yeah, I think if people kind of like are a little bit more open to their definition of a trail, they can <laughs> you know, experience trail running even in an urban setting. No, Central Park, I mean, is a great example. I mean, I've, I've been on you know, 10 mile trail runs in Central Park. So yeah. How many loops did you do? <laughs> <laughs> it was a few loops. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of zigzagging, but uh, yeah, was, totally. yeah. But to your point, you know, we were in the trees a lot of times. So it was kind of cool. I mean, you could still hear taxis and shit in the yeah, background. Yeah. But that, I don't know. By. That's yeah. kind of cool. I mean, here in Europe, I can still hear like the like weird ambulance noises. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen carefully. You might hear them. Um, <laughs> But, okay, so another question I had for you. Um, I mean, you, you've you been in the sport, like you said, 25 years? Two and, and a half decades, yep. It's, I mean, that's so impressive. It's like, it's, it's one of my goals for, for running just because I love movement. And I think, I mean, trail running to me, it doesn't have to be fast. It doesn't have to be a certain, a certain time or pace. It's just movement. But how, how do you keep inspiring yourself inspiring others or just are coming up with new things to do new projects and how do you keep going you know i just think to me like what would be the coolest thing to do like i just think of what would be so cool to do this and you know like running 50 marathons in 50 states in 50 days i just thought seeing all of the u.s i took my family so my kids got to see how many people have actually been to all 50 states I they were Yeah, I mean, before they were 10 years old, they were in all 50 states. So we got to experience the food, the travel. I love travel. Yeah. So I thought, with that model in mind, what would be bigger, broader, bolder, cooler? And now I want to run a marathon in every country of the, of the world in one year. So I, want to, yeah. I, I pitched it to the North Face, a global expedition to run. There are 205 or 203 actually now UN recognized countries. So run a marathon in each and every one of them in a one year expedition. Oh my gosh. And I can't even imagine. I mean, I think you've mentioned this to me before, but the logistics like for travel and how you can actually attack this, like which direction do you go? Man, like that, that is a, that's a crazy conundrum to even, to even organize, let alone like, you know, to do that. Have you, have you, like, how long does it take to plan something like this? Well, I mean, I gotta be honest. I didn't do all the organization. Um, the same, uh, the same company, you know, Hawkeye Sports and Entertainment. Yeah. Uh, it's now Hawkeye Publicist or Publicist Experience. They're the event managers for the Endurance Challenge Series. So I've worked with them for the past 15 years. Uh, and they're event specialists and logistics specialists. Yep. So they put together a plan. And I mean, it, the plan is there. Like they have, like, here it is. The plan's done. You know, we have boat segments. Oh, you know, yeah. We have flight segments. There's bus segments. There are rickshaw segments. Oh, but the planning yeah. is all done. Yeah, they've got, the, the whole thing is mapped out. Oh, that is so cool. Do you need a, you know, do you need a crew chief? <laughs> <laughs> I need you to come I run a couple countries with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that'd be amazing yeah because then you can have do you still have the same thing like police escort to help you kind of like have people come out for the community too to run with you yes i want to bring community members out i want to bring out all of the you know the glor the, the north face global athlete team as i'm passing through that region maybe run five six you know seven marathons back to back oh man 
That sounds like such a cool project. I mean, yeah, yeah. I would just let me know. I'll come, I'll come follow you around. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Here's a, here's a quiz. Of the 203 UN recognized countries, how many do you think actually have an organized marathon? So there's 203 total countries. How many have a, 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 mar a marathon? I would say 45% of them. <laughs> you're, such a, you're such a geek. 45%. <laughs> I, I, when I signed up for this, I was told there'd be no math. So okay. what does that equate to? So but okay. you're, you're pretty, so less, less than half is what I was going for. So two, you're, how pretty, do you're pretty close. It's yeah. 109. 109 countries Dang. have actual organized marathons. And then the rest I'm working with, I've been working with Google just to do a map. Mm -hmm. uh, probably I'll work with Strava to actually do a better you know, job of actually tracking on it. But yeah. actually first coming up with a map of, uh, of a course and then inviting people to come run it. Most of them are going to be on the trail. That's amazing. And do you think yeah. that that would help actually sanction a marathon in the places that don't have them? Like a lot of people have asked me about that, like the country, like the, yeah. I was a U.S. athlete ambassador. So yeah. I've been on two sports diplomacy envoys, one to Central Asia and uh, the other to South America. And um, the Office of uh, Soft Diplomacy or Sports Diplomacy uh, has asked, you know, a couple of the embassies, because they're going to be like the logistics experts on the street, the mm -hmm. activation partners are all the embassies. Yeah. And they've said there's been a lot of interest in potentially starting a marathon uh, in that country. That's amazing. I think that'd be really great. Yeah. I think that's so cool, especially just because I think, I mean, not, I mean, this is a cool project and a cool feat to do in, its, in, an, in and of itself. However, just the community that running can generate, I mean, it's, it's something that is just beyond words. It's something that you can just experience. And a fellow runner, you know, you can just, you, you have this kind of unspoken bond with someone that runs. And I think that that's such a good thing for, for any community to have. So, oh man, I hope, I yeah, mean. Yeah, no, you've experienced as well as I, you know, we're very blessed to have experienced it the way we have, but yeah. I tell people, you know, you, you can go to another uh, run specialty store in Sydney, Australia and go yeah. running with people and they're just the same as you. They're just as fired up. They're just as positive. They're just as supportive. So yeah. running is very universal. Yeah. Yeah. And so, okay, so this is your next project. Do you, when do you assume to start it? <laughs> Five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was, it yeah, was yeah. first green lighted um, <clears throat> with the North Face five years ago. Yeah. And then uh, we had a couple of hiccups. And yeah. then Todd Spoleto, who was the president who had to approve it. I, I think you remember Todd. Yep, I do. Uh, he actually moved on. So, it's been a kind of, I've been kind of restarting it uh, for the past five years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's something if you ever need a, you know, letter of support. Um, <laughs> but so, I mean, after all of these, you know, projects and ideas, do you ever get kind of, um, do you ever get a letdown from like after, a, like, you know, achieving some big goal that you've had? You know, in so many ways, this sounds funny, but to me, crossing the finish line is almost a letdown. And it, huh. what I realized is it, it's not getting to your destination. It's the journey. Yeah. So, you know, I have this quote, you know, when you get to where you're going, keep going. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's the pursuit where the magic is. And I think that, uh, you know, I was just in Australia for the Black All 100. Yeah. Which was a grunt, by the way. It was so hot and humid. It rained. Oh and oh, it was it was apocalyptic, but when, you know, when I got to the finish line, there's a bell. You ring this big black all bell, huge cowbell. And when I rang that bell, I was so fired up. And then when I rang that bell, it's it just like melancholy hit me. It's like, ah, yeah. well, that was a great experience. You know, now you go back to the hotel, you shower, you know, you go to the airport and you're out yeah. of there. Yeah, I know. I've experienced that so many times too. And I think um, it is, it's like the beauty of just like enjoying the process of training for a big goal. And then Maybe once, once you're done with achieving that goal, it's like the whole process of coming up with new goals, something that excites you. I think, I mean, maybe, maybe we just answered the question is like, that's the reason how you can find a way to keep going. Well, you know, I mean, th that race was uh, something else, but you know, the race experience to me is very different than like I once uh, with TNF uh, Australia, I once did a six day run from, it was called the uh, summit to Sydney. So the summit of uh, Mount Kosciuszko, which is the highest point in Australia, I ran from the summit uh, to Sydney and it was uh, 360 miles. 
in uh, six days. Oh my gosh. So I was, yeah, I was doing basically 60 K, uh, or, uh, 60 miles, hundred K, uh, every day. But it was our, it was like this group of raggedy, um, you know, guys that weren't trail runners that became, became runners, uh, in this RV, they were supporting me. There was just a bunch of us guys out there in the outback, you know, just of Australia. Oh, that's awesome. And the, you know, that was fun. Like going to a race, let's be honest, it's kind of fun, but it's kind of work. I mean, for you, especially, I mean, yeah. you kind of like, okay, you're, you got your game face on. I mean, you know, you're, even if you go out to dinner, you have some fun, you're going into a race. Like in the back of your mind, it's like, okay, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this. Mm -hmm. And then racing, I, I don't know if you consider it fun. I mean, even for someone like my level now, that's definitely not at the front of the pack you're still kind of racing, you know, it's a different yeah. experience than just running, you know, free form uh, with a bunch of guys in an RV. So I, I encourage people to do a little of both, you know, to keep yeah. it fresh. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like that too, because I mean, yes, as serious as certain races can, can be, I mean, I only have maybe one or two goal races a year. And then the rest of them I kind of use as like a, as a training run. <laughs> your, like, your training runs would crush most people. <laughs> ah, yeah, maybe. But like, it's a way for you to try to like, you know, keep it calm a little bit. So then things, so that I think the mental pressure doesn't add up so much, but you're right. There's a balance between the fun and then the seriousness of it. But at the end of the day, you're out there just like pushing yourself to be the best that you can be. So, I mean, yeah. I think that's a good balance, but I did have one question for you. I mean, you have, and this is probably going to be very difficult. So maybe you can just choose one of your favorite experiences. You've been like all over the world, have had all of these crazy gnarly races. Um, can you tell me one of your favorite experiences? Oh man. Well, I've raced and competed on all seven continents of earth twice now. Oh my so, God. So, <laughs> you know, like running a marathon to the South pole. Was, ah. Um, but like the South Pole is like so different than anywhere else I've been and anywhere you will, you can be. Yeah. And that's minus 40 degrees. It was Fahrenheit? minus, yeah, it was minus 42 Fahrenheit. Yeah. Oh my 25 God. degrees Celsius. Yeah. So, I mean, you can't even breathe in the super chill there because it'll freeze your lungs. Well, you know, you're from Colorado. So you got to wear a muffler. <laughs> I'm not bringing <laughs> you get, it gets cold in Colorado. Chill <laughs> Maybe not minus 42, but. Yeah, yeah. no problem. No. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that was an experience. Um, Did you running run with across the yeah, yeah, I ran with the balaclava the whole time. Oh, wow. And it, it, it froze on my face because of my respiration. So they actually had to cut it off the back of my head. The whole thing was frozen. My goggles, oh my, my gosh. balaclava, yeah, my, my muffler, it was all frozen. They cut it off the back of my head. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, but, wow. you know, so I've done crazy. I mean, I could go on about Atacama Desert. You know, I talked a bit about Australia and some of the uh, expeditions and fun things I've done there. Yeah. But, you know, like life, the, the most memorable things are not always getting an award or being on the podium. They're, nope. they're the little moments you share with people you love. And, you know, my favorite experience ever is running a, a 10 kilometer race, a 10K, uh, with my daughter, Alexandria, on her 10th birthday. And I mean, that's, that's like the best run ever. That was Aww. nothing to top that. Yeah. That's amazing. So yeah. I think, well, I mean, unless you have something else that you feel like we'd like, you'd like to talk about. I have one more question for you. Okay. Is it a loaded question? <laughs> it's oh, it's not a loaded drum roll, question. please. Just, I, feel, I feel like you've been, you know, at the, like just the birth of ultra running and trail running. And where do you see the sport going? You know, the sport is growing like crazy. So, uh, like I said, the first year I ran the Western States um, in 1994, there were 3,300 people that finished an ultra marathon in North America. Hmm. So uh, last year in 2018, there were 135,000 people that finished an ultra marathon in North America. So the growth has been astronomical. Yeah. And I think the growth is going to continue because like I say, I go to these marathons and I work the expo, you know, I'll do a book signing or a poster signing or something. And I used to hear all the time, oh, I want to run 10 marathons. You know, that's my goal. Like, I'm, I'm on number eight. Mm -hmm. Now people don't even care. They say, oh, man, I, won't, I can't wait to try an ultra marathon. Yeah. So the road racers will continue to convert. Uh, I think, you know, I get a pretty good snapshot of the, the whole, like, crowd that runs the ultra marathon. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. because like at the endurance challenge, I'm, you know, giving off the ready, set, go. And then I'm there until the last person starts. And, you know, the elites yeah. are, are still a very small, you know, maybe 5% of yeah. the, uh, of the total runners. I mean, we forget, like, even with um, UTMB, yeah. uh, you know, the elites are finishing in sub 24 most people finish between 35 and 40 hours. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So a lot more people are in, you know, and, and that I think is going to be the continued growth. I mean, more elites will get into it, yep. but that'll still be a fraction of the overall participants. Yeah. I think that's why it's important to have like different trail races that are accessible to everyone, to, to beginners, to people who are running in cities and, you know, finding these quote unquote trails, you know, if they're, if, even if they're just a crushed dirt path, you know? So I guess I yeah. lied. One more, one more question for you <laughs> is that what's your best trail running advice um, for someone who's looking to get into trails or ultra marathoning? Um, I think that, you know, look inside yourself and see how you like to train and prepare. Cause to run an ultra marathon, you know, you, you have to pay your dues. There's no shortcuts. Mm-hmm. So some people are love running in groups and like the accountability of a team and a coach. Mm-hmm. Call CTS. <laughs> you know, some people, it's, it's a very private solo experience. You know, they're introverted and they might just want to do it to see if they can do it. So, you know, know thyself and then, you know, use the approach to training uh, based on who you are. Yeah. I like that. That's great. Yeah. I think there's, ba- there's balance for everyone. There's no, there's no right, you know, recipe and exactly know thyself. Very wise words. Yeah. Say, listen, listen to everyone, follow no one. So, you know, take <laughs> advice from as many people as you can, but find what works best for you. Yeah. Well, oh, that's good. If, you know, for stubborn people like me. <laughs> <laughs> you are stubborn. I've seen that side of you. I think that's why you're such a great champion as well as, you know, you're stubborn. Uh, well, yeah. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I should tell that to my mother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast with us. Hey, and- I'm honored that I'm your first guest. I, oh. Wow. I'm very yeah. honored. So thank you, Hillary. I mean, I hope to have you on here again, but yeah, thank you so much for your advice and your stories. I could talk to you all day. So, <laughs> well, good luck with your podcast uh, career. You have a great uh, radio voice and you're a really good interviewer. Terry Gross, uh-huh. beware. Terry Gross, <laughs> beware. We competition coming. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks again for your time, Dean. Okay. Have a good day, Hillary. You Cheers. Too. Run on. <laughs>